At the Scripps Research Institute within the Erica Ullman Sapphire Laboratory, our scientific vision is to understand viral pathogenesis through the study of viral protein structures. We primarily focus on Ebola virus, a highly pathogenic and lethal hemorrhagic fever virus. Ebola virus encodes for only eight proteins in its viral genome, but those are enough to successfully replicate the virus and result in the observed virulence of Ebola virus. In our recent publication in Cell, we focus on one of these proteins called VP40. VP40 is a multifunctional protein and is primarily known to be the matrix protein of Ebola virus, which means it forms the shell or skeleton underneath the cellular membrane forming the viral envelope and packaging all of the viral ribonuclear protein complexes or guts of the virus into newly budding virions. Additionally, VP40 has been shown to play an essential, albeit unknown, role in viral replication, regulating viral transcription levels. In this paper, we ask the question, how does a single viral protein structure like VP40 facilitate all of these various and numerous um, functions during the course of the virus life cycle? And what we found was VP40 didn't form one structure, but formed three unique structures, each with a critical role and function during the course of the virus life cycle. The first structure we solved was of the VP40 dimer. We found this structure to be important for binding the cellular membrane, proper cellular trafficking, and acting as a critical precursor structure to other additional VP40 structures, which we'll talk about in a little bit. When we looked at the VP40 dimer structure, we found a conserved basic surface along one side of the dimer. When we altered the charge along the surface, we found it to be very detrimental to membrane binding as well as virus assembly along the membrane. This told us that electrostatic interactions with the membrane may be an important step triggering further assembly of VP40 into the viral matrix. Knowing this, we began screening with negatively charged additives in our crystal conditions in order to induce conformational changes in VP40. The result there's three dimers coming together into a linear hexameric crystal structure. As you can see, all the conformational changes occur in the C-terminal domain, linking the three dimers together into this hexameric structure. In this structure, three dimers have come together to form a new structure after significant conformational changes as a result of interacting with dextran sulfate. During the course of our studies, we discovered a point mutation that spontaneously triggered VP40 to form a third structure, an RNA binding ring structure. We were able to confirm the presence of these RNA binding rings through the Scripps core microscopy facility run by Dr. Malcolm Wood. And what we found was that these RNA binding ring structures were instrumental in regulating viral transcription levels. By collaborating with the Kawaioka Laboratory, we were able to go beyond just structural studies. Dr. Takeshi Noda's microscopy work revealed how each mutant interacted at the cell membrane. Replication assays performed by Dr. Peter Halfman were essential in identifying the RNA binding ring as a transcriptional regulator. Usually when one solves a protein structure, it becomes very tempting to map all of the known functions of that structure onto, onto the protein. And as a result of that, valuable information can be missed. As a result of our study, we believe when one solves the structure of a multifunctional protein, it should be taken into account that potentially that is one of many structures that that protein could form that all work in parallel to perform the known functions of that protein. We believe this phenomenon of a multifunctional, multistructural protein is going to be found more commonly in viruses where genetic information is limited in amount, and thus proteins like VP40, which are able to form, perform multiple functions from a single uh, polypeptide sequence, become a valuable asset to the viruses.